Hi everyone, welcome to my fly tying bench. I'm Phil Rowley. Today I'm going to tie you a Chronoman pupa pattern called the Two Tone GMC. It stands for the Two Tone Gunmetal Chromie and features the new Two Tone beads available from Canadian Llama. It's a simple little fly that's deadly on trout when they're feeding on Chronoman pupa. So join me at the bench and I'll show you how I tie it. If you enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to see future videos, and if you want to receive notifications, hit that bell as well. For all the materials, tools, and of course the recipe, check out the comments section below. So join me at the vise, and I'll show you how to tie this fly. My two-tone gunmetal chromie, or two-tone GMC, is a variation of my original chromie. This version works well when coronamid pupa are beginning to stage and the shine from the gases they trap beneath their pupal skin is just beginning to radiate. Here are the materials you will need. Alright, so let's tie the Two-Tone GMC, which stands for Two-Tone Gunmetal Chromie, a variation of my original Chromie pattern. And this is part of the Band-Aid series. Be careful how you handle heavy anchors. So let's get started. Into the jaws of my vise, I've placed a, a Daiichi 1120 a size 10 hook. I tie this 10s through 14s, even 16s. And the two-tone part of this comes from these new two-tone or um, beads um, that we get from Canadian Llama and they come in a variety of different colors so this is chronomid will have the white at the front to suggest the gills the black at the back to suggest a little bit of the thorax the darkened thorax but they come in lots of other great colors too now um, you can see purples hot oranges so for you know I'm looking at these going ooh all my euro nymphs that I like to tie my perdigons and things like this uh, excellent use for these so the, the combinations and permutations are endless and they have a unique little keyway so I slid the um, white one on first followed by the black one and there's a little keyway and they come in all different all your common bead sizes and we're just going to push those together give them a little squeeze and the thread helps put them in there's a that'll help lock them in so we're just going to attach in this case uh, our uh, rusty brown thread just get that started just behind the uh, bead. We'll take our scissors and trim that off so I don't yank the vise all over the place if I try to break it. Put that in, and then the thread will come up, and just that'll help push them and hold them together. We're just going to give the shank a good coating of the thread and wind down. So the thread's on about a 45 degree angle to the point, and then we're going to come up, and the rest of the fly is pretty simple. So we're going to tie in a rib, and just like my chromie, we're going to use some holographic mylar or flashaboo. This is uh, the hollow tinsel in the small. Let's get that secured in place, and I'm just holding that little pulling on it towards me a little bit. We'll keep it centered on the near side of the shank. It won't roll around because the material's under tension. Put that material clip and we're going to come back up. And at this point I'm going to try and build in a little bit of taper over the front third of the hook just to suggest the natural taper of the coronamid pupa. And this varies. You do this on all your chronomid pupa and how much taper you put in just depends on the thickness of the body material you're going to use. In this case we're going to use the original Flashaboo 6916 that we refer to as gunmetal gray and it's been a dye lot change. You can see the color here is kind of a, I think they call this blue steel and now this is the coloration of it. Both great colors but just different variations. And of course you could tie this style of fly and anything. So I've notched the package. I'm going to take a couple of strands out just with my scissors points. I'm now going to tie in the body material. Just 
get that tied in on the shank. And if I can, I'm going to just I want to fold that forward just a little bit because I'm going to overwrap, but I want to add durability cuz flashaboo, mylars, these are great materials for chronomids, but they're not that durable. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting a little base coating, an undercoating if you will, to the to the shank of soup brushable super glue. So when I go to wind this body material down, I'm now bonding it underneath. And we'll, we will be given this fly an external coating as well, but it just really makes your, your, uh, your flies durable. And we're just winding this material down, close touching turns. right down to the ribbing and then we're going to come back up and again by doing this we are having a chance to cover up any mistakes we have with gaps in our wraps and we're over wrapping the material and that super glue will ooze through a little bit through the seams and help bond the second return layer if you will all the way back up and we're just going to work this all the way up to the rear of the bead and the reason we use the the gunmetal gray kind of coloration or is early in the emergence the coronamid pupa are not necessarily that shiny vibrant uh, reflective nature that is so uh, common with the chromies and uh, so that the fish can get tuned into these chronomids as they begin to inflate with the gases they use they trap beneath their skin to elevate their way to the surface so this is just more of a subtle um, chromy variation and it works very very well for me and now we're just going to take the ribbing material and we're going to make a couple of wraps right at the end of the body to form a little butt three to four times one on top of each other and then the goal is is to carry that ribbing forward to make seven segments. So there's three, four, five, six, seven, and we got a little bit more. Again, don't be too concerned. The target is there to get the seven ribs, give you nine segments, but uh, don't, be too, don't waste too much uh, time worrying if fish can count. <laughs> and now all to finish the fly off is I'm going to counter spin the bobbin to flatten the wraps and then we're just going to build up a nice little thread thorax right at the back this rusty brown thread does an excellent job suggesting the coloration of the wing buds of the pupa and then I'm going to introduce our whip finisher and just finish the thorax off at the back and when I'm satisfied with it all I have to do is disengage I don't have to reintroduce the whip finisher when I want the thorax, you know, I'd rather I don't have to reintroduce the whip finisher um, to add bulk to the thorax and make it look at unproportional. So that's the finish, two-tone GMC, two-tone gunmetal chromie. And then all we're going to do is add a final body coating. I'm going to use some Solares Bone Dry. UV resin that's really thin head cement consistency. So we're just going to give this a nice light coating and you can coat the bead everything because it'll keep it make it chip resistant. Good coating all the way along underneath. You can rotate keeping the fly steady so you can see but normally I'd be rotating this as well. And the beauty of these resins is until you're ready for curing you can rotate the vise like this. Make sure it's where you want it Nice. It's better to do two thin coats if you want, and then we're just going to come in with the UV light and cure it up. It takes just a few seconds. Give that a good coating. And this light, Solaris light, it pulses because when you're using the bone dry, sometimes the heat that comes from curing will create a little smoke. Don't worry about it. That's perfectly normal. But the alternating pulse of light actually speeds up and improves the curing process. So this this is the 
the light that Solaris makes rechargeable. And there you have it, the finished two-tone GMC. So give that a try. Tend to fish this early in an emergence when the pupa are not that inflated down deep near the bottom. And you can of course tie this with a traditional bead and yarn gills, but these two-tone beads have lots of possibilities, not only to imitate a natural look like here with a black and white coloration, you could put a hot orange one in there, uh, all different colorations to make your fly stand out in the crowd. So there you have it, the two-tone GMC. For more information on fly fishing, and still water fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you will find fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, information regarding my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online Stillwater Fly Fishing Store. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. While you're visiting my site, please join my mailing list to receive my educational newsletters. You can also follow me through my social media channels. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and give this video a like. Please take the time to watch my other videos as well. Thanks for watching.